Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you GD Script in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. All right, in the last lesson, we set up our scene, including our camera, our ball, and our floor, and the skybox and lights. In this one, we will be creating a movement script for this ball so that it can roll around. Now to start with, let's go ahead and add some things that we haven't before. Add a new folder for scenes and a new folder for scripts. And then if we want to, for in the future, we can add a new folder for something like materials or textures or anything like that. But we're just going to leave it at scenes and scripts for right now. And we are going to take our ball and save it into scenes as ball.tscn. And then go ahead and go into that. And now we can see we have ball by itself. And that is fine. So now we are going to add a script to that ball. You can use the script button here or right click and attach script. Make sure and click on the little folder. So we can go up and into scripts and have it all nice and you know put in this right folder. Create that new script. And for those of you who have done the 2D GD script, this seems very familiar. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change this to physics process. That way it runs 60 times a second, regardless of the frame rate. And we are going to do one more thing that I haven't discussed in previous lessons before, which is we are going to change inputs. We normally use the arrow keys because those are built in. We are going to be defining our own inputs this time. We do this by, in case you were listening to me, going to Project, Project Settings, and Input Maps. We're going to do Movement Forward. Movement backward, movement left, and movement right. We click the plus, so movement forward is going to be the W key. Movement backwards is going to be the S key. And I think you all know this. Left is A, and right finishes off WASD. We can also go and do something like the joystick axis. So this is in case you have a controller like an Xbox or um, PlayStation controller hooked up. So forward would be left stick up. Backwards, of course, would be left stick down. And then left is left stick left. And right is left stick right. So now what that means is that when we're using the input function, we can actually specify those keys. So WASD or the um, controller. So for right now, we're going to add two functions. One is called process input and it takes the delta time. And the other is process movement that takes the delta time. We are going to call process input and then process movement. And now we can, in process input, utilize those if input is action pressed, which means we are holding it down. And we can see now forward, backward, left, and right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of these. Backwards. And there we 
have it. We have control for forward, back, left, and right movement. What we don't have is anything that we're doing with this. What we do, or what we're going to do, is add a new variable called movement input, and that is going to be a vector three. So we have to do a couple things now. One is if we're moving forward, and this is something that's going to be a little bit weird. We're going to movement input control the Z because if you look, so there's Y, which goes up and down, X, which goes right and left, and then Z, which goes towards you and away from you. So that's that new variable that, or the new um, direction you're gonna have to be dealing with, that new dimension. And strangely enough, Z is positive as it goes towards you. So if we wanna move forward, which when we consider forward, we move away from you, you have to subtract to get that. If we're moving backwards, we move towards us, which means in the positive. So this is the only thing that's going to be a little bit weird to get used to. To the left, of course, is this way, which means negative x, and movement input at x plus equals one to go to the right. So now if we press, nothing happens because we didn't hook it up to anything. So we can actually go and print our movement input. So let's see what happens down here. So if we press, we can see it adding and subtracting, which is how we would move. Now, if you notice, well, I'll let you, I'll let you see once we add the actual movement. So let's go ahead and remove this. We're going to do one thing, or we're gonna, we're gonna leave it like that for now. But I will go ahead and use this rigid body, which is going to be, we're going to add an impulse. So apply impulse. We're going to do it to vector three, zero, which means from the center. And the impulse that we're going to use is that movement input. So that should be good, right? We're going to press to the right and we're gonna go right, press to the left, we're gonna go left, press to the right, and it zooms off the screen. So why is that? So let's think about the physics here. If I press right, the movement input is added. And as you saw, when you add to it, it goes up to like plus five after a quick tap because it's going at 60, psych, or 60 frames a second. Every single frame, we are adding five force. We are applying an impulse of five over and over and over and over and over again which if you could jump in the air and jump and jump and jump and jump and jump, you shoot off, off the ground. Or if you, um, you know, pressed on the gas over and over in a car and there was no friction, you would just keep on going faster and faster and faster. So we need to deal with this. One way to deal with this, which is what we're using, or going to use, is resetting this movement input every time. So that will cause it to move correctly. So now there's another thing to deal with, and that's the fact that when we move at an angle, it seems so much faster than when we're moving left and right. You couldn't really tell there, but it does happen. And if we're going into a first person shooter, you can really tell that first person view if you go left and right at the same speed, will always feel overpowered because you're moving at faster than one unit a second. To fix this, we're going to say movement input equals movement input dot normalized. What normalized does is it takes 
these two angles and it figures out what is this angle. So normally it'd be one and one. So it says, how do you bring this down to where the value of this extra angle is only one? And that turns out to be 0.7 this way, 0.7 this way, or around, around that, 0.71. And that'll make the length of this one, because you have to think it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, 0.7 squared is 0.49, 0.7 squared is 0.49. You have an angle of about 0.98, and that's you know 0.99 squared. Um, so you're going to be moving to the left at 0.7, and up at 0.7. And as you can see now, sideways movement is not as powerful as it was before. Ooh. All right, and so that's it for movement. What we want to do next is bound in our character. Because right now, you can see it just kind of falls off the map. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did with the floor, which means we need a static body. Call this wall. We are going to add a mesh instance of type cube. Click on that and go ahead and say, all right, I only want it one. Let's get the same angle, one but we want this to be 20, so it's as long as that is. So now we're at one and 20, and we wanna add another child node, which is that collision shape. Go ahead and make a box. Click on the box, and we can see this needs to be 0.5, and this needs to be 10, because of how those extents work. So you can see now it's lined up there, it's lined up on the side, it's lined up on the end. So now let's go ahead and save this off as wall. Now press Control D to duplicate. Let's take these walls, put them on the sides. In case you didn't see earlier, I clicked on this little um, snap mode. It makes a lot of this work a lot easier. Put these walls up. And let's go ahead and do something about the color so they don't blend in as much. And say, let's make a new spatial material and set this to something like, no, we're already green. So let's do red. So you can actually even do, let's do white and then give it a nice emission of red. And so now we have walls to bound ourselves in. And there you have it. We now have a ball that you can roll around and bounce off the walls. We can add walls wherever we want. And then you can also fall off the world. And there it goes. All right, and that's it. In the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and work on learning about physics materials, which is how you make something have friction or bounce. Um, we're going to work on adding some jumping that's going to be similar to what you saw in the 2D. And then we're also going to move the camera so that it follows the ball around so you can work on making a ball-based platformer a la um, Marble Madness. So if you've never played Marble Madness before and know what I'm talking about, go ahead and look that up. It is a very, very difficult old game, um, and we're going to be able to make something along those lines. And that is it for now. See you later. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.